Hey, you guys, Dr. Nicole here. Wanted to talk to you today about what is vulvodynia. Vulvodynia is actually a chronic pain condition describing some unexplained pain in the vulva. Basically, vulvodynia, the, co- the suffix dynia means pain. So vulvodynia basically just means pain in the vulva, which actually really isn't very descriptive about what is actually causing that pain. So let's take a look at a female pelvis here for a second. So the vaginal opening is right here, the urethra is right here, and the rectum is right here. The vulva is the opening to the entrance to the vaginal canal. So vulva and vagina are two different things. So the vulva is the opening of the uh, vaginal canal. The vestibule is the actual little teeny opening right there. So like the vestibule would be like the inner circle and then the vulva would be this um, entire opening to the uh, vaginal canal. So vulvodynia is basically pain in this region of the pelvis. Vestibulodynia is pain in the vestibule, which is basically where that opening, that circle opening is there of the vaginal canal itself. It's very localized right to the vestibule versus around the entire vulva. So this can be characterized in a couple of different ways. It can be generalized, meaning this entire system, the entire vulva is a problem, or it can be localized, meaning Usually, it's in a certain part of the of the uh, vulva area. So we usually look at it like a clock. And the most common presentation of true vulvodynia is from three to nine o'clock, kind of in that lower half of the clock. Although you can have pain all the way up till twelve. So that's that. So it can be generalized or localized and it can be provoked, meaning you're kind of sort of okay when there's nothing that's touching it. Um, But then it can be also provoked, which means that you have very bad pain or a significant increase in symptoms when something touches this area. This can be as simple as jeans, as a seam of pants, um, sitting on a surface, underwear, and then the obvious is um, vaginal intercourse or even any sort of sexual activity touching on the outside of the vulva. So vulvodynia and vestibulodynia is essentially a diagnosis of exclusion, meaning that you have to rule out a bunch of other things before vulvodynia can actually be ruled in. So no, there is no one test that says, oh, you have vulvodynia. Um, so it basically is, is made after there's a lack of an identifiable cause and the pain has lasted, I think the definition now stands at three months. Um, the thing that I want you guys to take away from this video in particular is that there are multiple reasons why you can have pain at the vulva. And a lot of them can be musculoskeletal and neuromuscular, right? Meaning muscles um, in the pelvic floor and or nerves in the pelvic floor. So here's the thing. A lot of physicians don't actually know how to assess for muscles and nerves of the pelvic floor to be causing those symptoms. They're looking for things like skin integrity, um, infections, They're looking to rule out things like lichen sclerosis and all kinds of other um, vulvar dermatological issues, right? And they're also making sure that there's nothing, there's no cancer of the vulva or any other sort of sort of obscure thing or an infection that's causing this burning, stabbing, stinging, all these types of pains. But those pains can also be descriptors of nerve pain. So one of the things that a pelvic floor physical therapist is really equipped to do is to actually assess from a muscle standpoint, from a nerve standpoint, what is the actual cause potentially or contributing factors with the muscles and nerves of the pelvis and pelvic floor to why this this, uh, area is transmitting pain to the brain. 
And the interesting thing is that there is a nerve, and you guys have probably heard of the pedendal nerve, but the pedendal nerve basically has three main branches, urethral and clitoral, perineal, and rectal. Now, one of the things that a physical therapist definitely needs to be assessing is, is the pedendal nerve irritated, causing these vulvar type symptoms? Or is it a different nerve? There's a lot of nerves that come actually from your back that innervate the skin over the vulvar area. One's called the genitofemoral nerve. Um, there's another couple that sort of go in that general vicinity called the ilioinguinal nerve, the iliohypogastric nerve are all sort of right in there. Even sometimes the femoral nerve can sort of, doesn't actually go right to the vulva, but sometimes in the, in the areas of, of a localized pain where we normally don't have to be that discerning about what's going on, then your brain gets kind of confused and can actually um, represent the area of the vulva as bigger um, in your brain. And that's called brain smudging. And we can go into that at a different talk, but but that's sort of the reason why we really feel like pelvic floor physical therapists are really important because we can see if this stuff is causing some of the symptoms that is stumping your physicians. And that's not to say that we should stop seeing your physician at all. They're a very integral part of the medical team for vulvodynia, but we also need to make sure that they are well-trained in it. And it's not necessarily just a GP or a regular OB that has, that wants to deliver babies and doesn't want to go into pain. Right? So, um, there was a, actually a study that was done that showed that, um, over only 13% of OBGYNs were actually comfortable assessing and treating vulvar pain complaints. Yikes. That's not that many. Um, and so they kind of were kind of like, yikes, we learned about that way a long time in school and I don't really deal with that. So like, what the heck is going on? So what what we really advocate for is a multidisciplinary approach to vulvodynia of which pelvic floor physical therapists are an integral part of this. So we already talked about pelvic floor physical therapy and how we can actually look and feel some of these muscles um, that are really closely related to the vulvar tissue. And then the perineum, if you have perineal pain right here, these are all muscles that can be contributing factors. There's also muscles that are a little bit deeper that can actually be causing issues as well. And then where these holes are back here, that's actually where some of the nerves that come out that innervate the pelvic floor and the vulvar area, like I was talking about. And so sometimes even things like constipation can actually irritate those nerves on the backside and can create some symptoms of vulvodynia. Um, the vulvodynia is also super commonly, um, confused with things like interstitial cystitis because vulvar pain can also cause urinary urgency and frequency. So it might not be that you have two separate things going on or three or however many other specialists you're going to. The common denominator can definitely be the pelvic floor muscles, you see how close the urethra is to the vestibule and the vulvar tissue. And in fact, the urethra is more closely related to, ure uh, to vulvar tissue than it is to the bladder, which is interesting. So, you know, I just feel like we definitely want a multidisciplinary approach of which pelvic floor physical therapists are sort of quarterbacking, if not a very close, not really second. I don't really feel like they should be second, but they should definitely be part of that, that medical team. Um, some topical medications can be prescribed for, by your uh, physician. Um, there's some other good over-the-counter products that have lidocaine in them that can sometimes help just from symptomatic relief. Um, the pelvic floor in this region specifically is really um, sensitive to stress. So while the pain is not in your head, it can certainly be exacerbated neurologically by increased stress. So there are tons of alternative treatments that your pelvic floor physical therapist can sort of assess you for and see if you'd be appropriate for things like acupuncture um, and overall nervous system calming. And then there's also a lot of evidence that nutritional uh, changes can also help the vulvar pain 
symptoms. And again, we know all of that. That's what we go to school for is helping the musculoskeletal and neuromuscular system thrive in an environment of proper nutrition, stress management, movement, and sleep. So of all of the things that we can be a part of, vulvodynia is one of the major ones that we can really help with. So I really encourage you guys, if you have been diagnosed with vulvodynia or think you have the symptoms of it, please add pelvic physical therapy to your uh, team so that you can really see if these guys, these muscles and these nerves are contributing to your symptoms. I hope that helps, and I hope you can find a pelvic floor physical therapist in your area. Please visit pelvicsanity.com uh, if you need help finding one in your area.